Fleming was born on February 23, 1889 in California. His career behind the camera began during the First World War when he served as a photographer. He later became the chief photographer for President Woodrow Wilson. He directed his first film, When the Clouds Roll By, in 1919. He soon established connections with stars like Spencer Tracy and Douglas Fairbanks. He joined MGM in 1932 and began to work on some of their most prestigious films. With movies like Red Dust, Bombshell, Reckless, and Treasure Island, he became known as a man's director with a very virile movie style. Fleming also earned a reputation for saving troubled movie sets. In 1939, he was called to the set of The Wizard of Oz. He scrapped the work of the previous directors and started from scratch. Fleming went to great lengths to extract quality performances from his actors. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Lions and tigers and bears. Oh For example, in the first takes of the forest yellow brick road sequence, Judy Garland could not keep herself from laughing at the scarecrow, tin man, and lion. So, Fleming walked over to her, slapped her in the face, and told her to behave. Judy then completed the scene perfectly and thanked him by kissing him on the nose. Put him up, put him up. In addition to the acting performances, Fleming was very involved in the movie's special effects. When the door first opens and Dorothy leaves her house to go into Oz, there are actually two Dorothys in the sequence. First you see Judy Garland stand in Bobby Cachet in the brown and white checkered dress opening the door. She then backs out of the frame and Judy herself in the colored dress walks into Munchkinland. To create Glenda's bubble arrival, they filmed a stationary 8-inch glass ball. The camera moved but the ball did not. They shot the ball from many different angles and distances to give the illusion that the ball was moving on the screen. It took Fleming two weeks to approve the lighting of the ball so that it would glimmer the way he wanted it to in the film. <laughs> Melting the Wicked Witch proved to be a challenge for Fleming. Margaret Hamilton stood on an elevator platform, but when the elevator started to move down, the air rushing up through the hole in the floor blew off her hat and lifted up her dress. To solve the problem, he tacked her dress to the ground and put her in a significantly larger hat to make it look like her head was shrinking. Fleming left The Wizard of Oz a few weeks early to take over the struggling set of Gone with the Wind. The movie starred Clark Gable, one of Fleming's good friends. In total, Gable starred in five of Fleming's films. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. The Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind went on to be two of the most iconic films of all time. The best direction of 1939, I asked Mervyn Leroy to present me to Victor Fleming, the man who directed Gone with the Wind. I cannot accept this without paying tribute to those really responsible for much of the picture's success. The uh, crew behind the camera to whom I am deeply grateful. Victor Fleming is truly an American movie master who has earned his place in cinematic history. Oh, M.E.M., there's no place like home.